The People's Champ, your favorite host, Mr. Exclusives. We have a special guest with us today. He goes by the name of Mocha Only. What's going on, fam? Greetings, man. How you doing? I'm pretty good. Thank you for having me on the show. No, it's my pleasure. Juno Award winner, much, much music, award winner. I mean, these are big things. I mean, it's only right we have royalty in the building. Ah, uh, <laughs> too kind. You are too kind, sir. I mean, I'm going to just jump straight into it. Okay. I mean, you know, you... You started from the ground up. You built your, your your empire. Everybody knows your music. I mean, we're all a fan. I mean, how does that make you feel? Um, good question. I don't know. I've been too busy to really process it. Same. <laughs> Wheels are going too fast for you yeah. just to. Not. I mean, I mean, be perfectly honest with you. Like, I look at myself like a humble individual, and I'm probably the last person you'll know to get caught up in his own hype. You know what I mean? No, I hear you. I definitely feel like that. I'm trying to. I'm a, I'm a man of the people. That's how I look at it. Okay, man. Yeah, yeah. You Robin Hood. Uh, <laughs> you Robin Hood. <laughs> I, I hear you. That, but. No, um. So I'm gonna jump straight to the album. Yeah. I want to talk about that magical weirdness. Mm -hmm. Where did the title come from? Where did that come from? Um, for a long time now, I've been interested in uh, magic and the occult and stuff. Um like uh, from the likes of Aleister Crowley and stuff. I just find it fascinating. I'm, I'm somewhat well read about it. And, um, but as far as the album title itself, the, the first notion I got to use that title, I was reading a Rolling Stone and in the review section, this was last summer, in the review section, they were uh, talking about some girl's new album and they, they, the, the author said something about was time to get caught up in her own brand of magical weirdness, and it just it stuck. It just seemed like a fitting title for, for um, for what I do, because I I try to build a world within my music. I try to build a, a universe, mm -hmm. for, not only for myself to escape to, but to ho hopefully help get other people to, to indulge in that world. Because it's I mean it, it's fantasy to to some degree. I mean rap is definitely based in reality, but we're all trying to escape. So that's the message, basically, for uh, the album title. Yeah, that's the message, and it's just it's just about fun. I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. I, the majority of my projects, I, I don't try to go too far into it conceptually because I like to leave myself room for anything, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if I stick too hard to a particular script, I find it confining. I understand. Yeah. Now, so for the album, like, uh, how long did it take for you to, 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 to come up with the album? Like, how long did the, the process take? The, the tracks, the, like, all, everything? This one was different. Normally, I, I can make an album from anywhere, any, any anywhere from like a day or two to like- A day? A day? Uh, I did that once. That's a, that's a Jay-Z move right there. Well, Jay-Z ain't doing his beats. I had to do my beats too. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you can imagine that's a lot of work. Definitely. Uh, typically a couple weeks. You know what I'm saying for for an album, but this time I I took my time and just did it like piecemeal, incrementally, um, about a year, about a year. And during that time, I break and work on other projects and do production for other people as well. But uh, this one I took my time with, and as my manager was saying earlier, like I've switched, I've switched the track list several times to end up with the final product. I'm happy with it, and I think people that are into beats are really gonna like it because the album consists of a. There's 32 tracks on the album, and a lot of them are only a minute long. 32. Yeah, magic, wow. magic number. <laughs> yeah. Magic number. Yeah. No, and that's funny you talk about beats because, with no, I like that beat because it was that hip hop old school with the piano. Like I like that type. It's got of a little bounce to yeah, it. Yeah, like yeah. like where I'm actually gonna nod my head to it and. That's just me, that just comes natural. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be old school. That's just, I'm from the 90s. Like, that's my energy, that's where, where I feel like I thrive. That's where I, I, I think I got my stripes. Uh, and I had some great, great, great teachers too. So um, I sort of just, without trying, carry that energy over into now, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to beat a dead horse and try to, you know, I'm not coming out talking about like my pager and all that stuff. Like, <laughs> it's just musically and aesthetically like that's what I'm comfortable with, and that's 
you know, I push the boundaries within that circle, so to speak. I'm not so interested in keeping up with everybody else's like electronic music agenda that's not for me. Without. Now you um you got the album coming out, you're on tour right now. Yeah. Um we we for the people that don't know, we were supposed to do this I think it was last week, but mm -hmm. uh for the fact, because when I went to the show, um, that was in Toronto, they were like, "Yo, you see Mocha?" I'm like, "Nah, I ain't seen him, but where he at?" You know. <laughs> so I was talking to the manager, but for the people that uh, didn't know what what happened that day, my sincerest apologies. Um, here's what happened in in a nutshell: I went to get my passport renewed the previous Monday, which should have been a straightforward process, and I would have had it in a day, but they deemed it to be damaged and defected, so they ran me through all crazy rigors to get. To apply for a brand new passport i didn't have a current birth certificate i had to apply for that I had to apply for british columbia id long story short that's what held it up i and as you know you can't fly without you know valid picture id so that's what happened and um you know i'm real bummed about it i, I was mad but there's not much i can do about it except for come back which i always do i mean i'm always in toronto no doubt now yeah. um even though you weren't there, which it did suck. There was actually another group that headlined that show. Yeah, and uh, yeah. they did an amazing job. Uh, Tanya no, Morgan? Exactly, nobody was missing nothing. Tanya Morgan was there, that's all good. So, I know they're in the building. Why don't you come up real quick, yeah. dog? Come talk to us real quick. We got we got Darn Will in the house right now. Yo, yo, what up, what up, what up? Hey, what's good? Live now, though. Everything good? Yeah, man. Everything's good. I got my Wi-Fi. I can check my, my email, <laughs> get text messages. You know message. what I mean? <laughs> you be in contact now. Exactly. But um, no. Congrats. Uh, the the show and the performance you guys put on. Thank like, you, man. Thank Nick, you. no. Mocha's managers tell me, yo, go check these guys out. Go check these guys. I'm like, all right, man. I'm gonna check it out. Leave me alone, man. You know. What I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Nick I know is, he's looking at me like, oh, exclusives, man. Nick is pretty persistent. Yeah, so I'm like, I went in and I sit there because I see Rich Kid, so me and him are talking. Yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah. yo, Shout these guys are dope. Kid. Shout out to Rich Kid. Yeah, yeah he's that's, that's he's going to be coming sure, out exclusive. Man, right. But then we were sitting there, and I'm like, yo, that first track, what's that? What's the name of that track? So the first song we did was called Let's Get Started, and it's off of our upcoming album, You Get What You Pay For. That was a stupid track. Thank you, man. No, Thank like, you. I'm telling you, I just wanted to go on the dance floor and push everybody <laughs> like, move, I'm here, man, you know? Yeah, we got uh, Astro Note produced it. Oh, okay. Yeah, cut out of can uh, uh, France, my bad. He's pretty, really dope. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. you guys have a real dope flow, and it reminds me of real hip-hop music. Thank you, man. Like, you know, it, it, that's that's what makes it dope to be able to share a stage with cats like Mocha only because, mm -hmm. you know, like, like how he was saying he comes from the 90s. Like, we're, we're pretty much from the same era. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got my start a little bit later. You know what I'm saying? But okay. the music we make is definitely true to that aesthetic. And, and it definitely to have those type of peers around you as well and, and that support as well from, like, notable peers. I mean, that who, who are also in that aesthetic, that's... It's crazy. Yeah, like like when we're we're the sh the the show when we're on stage together, like as as a unit, it, it like just forms like the, it's it's a magic it's, it's magical, magical weirdness. Magical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one right there. So it, like you, it's a great fit for the tour. It yeah, just I was works. gonna say, how did the how the chemistry like? How did you guys even come together? That's what I want to know. I like their music from Jump personally, and when I found out that we had the same, they just signed with the the same booking agency back in oh, December. Okay. Uh, and I requested it. Yeah, yeah, and like, like when uh, our booking agent brought it across our desk, I'm just like, hell yeah, like you know what I'm saying? Like, wasn't like, even the question, like, dude. <laughs> I, I've been, I've been checking this guy's stuff out, stuff out for a minute, like on a personal tip. We, we met through Twitter, you know yep. what I'm saying? Like, oh, oh, you know, okay. Twitter brings the world together, but we haven't followed each other on Twitter, like. I you found can just through, through MySpace back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> That's an old school choice, and, right there. And you can you can just find you can get like a real good read on how a person is mm -hmm. or a lot of like oh, this this dude is pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? Pretty genuine. So yeah, yeah. appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you guys are all going on tour. Uh, what's the next What's the next stop? Because you guys just did Hamilton. Is it Whippy? Tonight Whippy. is Whippy, Ontario. Yeah. Okay, Whippy, and then you guys go to the state. Uh, Kingston. Kingston. Kingston, and then the state. Ottawa. Oh my goodness! Man. Like, <laughs> can I get one right? Uh, we're moving, man. We're you know moving. what I'm saying? After Ottawa, it's the states, right? Uh, after Ottawa is uh, Reykjavik, Iceland. <laughs> I'm not asking anyone. We're with York. York that night. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm joking. Nah, we, yeah. Bjork. Yeah. We, 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 we're jorking it up. So, um, 
can we see uh, before? Because we're gonna get back to Mocha, but before we do that, is are we gonna see a collab uh, track with you guys? Never. Ne- Sorry. This no. is the collab. You gotta come to the show to see the yeah, see yeah. us. Now nah, you know what? I mean, energies. I think I think that's a given. Personally, yeah, I think that's yeah. a given. But if you really want to witness something, witness the uh, the the advent to it. Witness like what's happening beforehand. You know yeah, what's yeah. leading up to that. Because you. you know we, I, I hate to my own horn. I'm not that type of cat. But you know what? We do. We collectively we bring something different. We bring, we we're living in an era amidst a lot of clonery and buffoonery, and um, I'm not knocking it, but I'm just saying what it is. And and you know we bring. An alternative to that. That's what, that's what it is. Well, you know, that brings up a question, and I might as well, um, this is for both of you, because um, I'm a fan of the 90s hip-hop, and I don't feel that the new generation of hip-hop is doing it for me. I just want to know you guys' personal opinion on that. I like some of it, but um, not a lot of it, personally. I, I listen, most of the music I listen to is either, most of the music I listen to is either mine or stuff from the 60s. Yeah, yeah. So what, 60s? <laughs> like, Jazz, oh, okay. pop, okay. Motown, so like oh, everything. Oh, okay, Motown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm overall just a fan of music. I mean, like, like I'm again, like I feel like there are music for certain moments. So, like we were talking about Coco, that's on the Coco. Like, oh, yeah. like that that song in itself, you can't clean your house to it. You know what I'm <laughs> if, if you're in the, if you're in the club dancing and it comes on, you might get lost in that moment because that's what it's for. But the problem is, for me, seems to be a lot of people are using moment, music in the wrong moments. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. So in terms of what I enjoy and what I listen to, like, like I'm, I gotta echo that sentiment. When we're making music, I listen to me and I listen to us and I can't really take a lot of other stuff in. But like right now I'm in a moment where I'm like just being a fan of, of rap all, overall and music in general. I find myself listening to a lot of, um, when it comes to artists I, I, I take into my daily life, I listen to a lot of artists that kind of just align with the aesthetic. So artists with those familiar leanings like, like, you know, like Kendrick will do some stuff that, says, that kind of has yeah, a yeah, feel yeah. of, like, uh, uh, Death Certificate Ice Cube. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? Or, like, mm-hmm. like I listen to stuff that, that reminds me of, of things, of areas of music that I enjoy. Not only that, but even even um, some of the cats that I looked up to coming up, they're still putting out quality material. Yeah. Like Hieroglyphics Camp and stuff, Souls of Mischief. Ain't nobody stopped. Or, like, a brand new being for sale. You know, Sud Alex is his, he's incredibly prolific. You know what I mean? I'm checking for all of that still. Okay, so we're going to jump back to you, but don't go anywhere. We, you're, you're in this now. You can't go. You're oh, in this now. I'm just going to lay back. <laughs> so the um, the album, the new single, No, directed by Michelle Key. How'd that come about? How'd the video come about? Yeah, the concept, uh, how how the relationship come with her? Um, she actually did. She was involved in a video for me in 2012 from the Airport 6 album. Uh, from a song called The Tighten Up. So that's where I met her from and stayed in touch and knew that she was going to be doing her, her solo thing as a as um, a video director because she was she was only an assistant before. And um, yeah, when we came, when it came time to start talking about doing videos, she was the first, one of the first people I thought about. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she's a local Vancouver girl. I mean, she does her thing and I think the video turned out good. No, I think it was dope. I definitely thought it was dope. So, my question is, we're going to the States. Um, you have a lot of friends there, including one particular from Vancouver, Mad Child. Okay, yeah. How's the relationship with you guys? You guys still talk? Yeah, it's cool. It's cool, for sure. I mean, um, and over the years, we still do the odd show together here and there. Uh, I've always wished him nothing but success with what he's done and he's turned his life around and um he's in a really good spot right now he puts out quality material for sure as far as us working together i mean you know it may happen it may not it, ha- it has over the past few years we've done like the, the odd collab here and there okay yeah. that's, that's dope that's good at least family still family oh yeah yeah absolutely so uh for the album can we get it is there any special features or are we keeping this strictly mocha it's you know what I did the majority of it. It's mostly me, but we have I have one very special feature on the album, um, and it's monumental to me because it's somebody that like I I remember in 1991 being like I have to do a song with this cat one day. It's Grand Pooba from Brand New Man. Oh okay, that's dope. Yeah, that's a good look. So the, the title and the chorus off of a line that he did in uh, his song from 1992 called 360. Okay. Grand Pooba was a god. 
you know what I mean? I mean, in more than one sense of the word, like, but he's, man, he's the flow master. Like, he's a, a real originator oh. and still sticks to the script and flips it. So the, the album's dropping July 15th. Yeah. Are we gonna, are we just uh, gonna do no for now? Or are we gonna drop another video uh, before the album drops? We got many plus plenty. Many plus many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, you even got me stuttering on that. <laughs> now, um, you're an international artist uh -huh. and you've been around the world everywhere. Yeah. And I need your help with something. Uh, basically it's guidance and help to the guys that are trying to come up and get to where you are. Right. Um, basically in the city, you know, with certain stations, I'm not gonna name who, but uh, our underground artists feel that they're not, they're not getting the love and the support. And some <clears> of the stations are saying, you know, you gotta make it in the States before you can get uh, our support. How do you feel on that? And if so, and well, basically, how do you feel on that first? Man. And what do they need to do? Well, okay, the last thing you said there, to me, that's not a new concept. I think uh, Canada, in a general sense, has always been very, very influenced what was uh, from what's happening to our, our, our neighbors from the south, and um, sometimes I think there's been a bit of an identity crisis, um, and maybe even uh, damn, I'm a little tongue tied right now. I can't think of the word for it. Um, not believing in them, themselves enough to to. Mm just support their own you know what i'm saying but then again it's funny because at the same token i never put myself in a box as a canadian rapper i i think to me that seems silly like i just you know i live in vancouver i, I kind of more think regionally than you know i'm not like this nationalist you know what i'm saying mm. <laughs> i'm just mr all over captain random <laughs> so yeah. but but I, I will say this i mean Really, the one thing that's gonna help any artist, well, there's a couple things. For one, just do you. Like, you have a voice, you have your own favorite haunts where you like to go to. Why not talk about that? You'll, you'll have the community a lot more involved and on your side if you are a reflection of your immediate environment. And because rap is autobiographical, like, for the most part, that, that was, always is leaning and hasn't strayed too far from that you'd be doing yourself and everybody around you a much greater service if if you represent so to so to speak i really truly believe that and then second off is being relentless don't let situations pass where you could have shared your music like personally not just this facebook era stuff where you just i mean people will find that annoying when you um you just send them links all the time and inbox them once you become Facebook friends or whatever. Now nah, there's much more ways to do it. I mean, see people in person. Um, um, showcase without making everything an advertisement. Get heard in more of an organic way and just keep doing it, keep doing it. Don't sit back and rest on your laurels because you did one mixtape and you think you did issue because of that you just have to keep going if you really want this you'll do it that's what it really comes down to i always wanted it from the beginning and, and i don't understand the concept of limiting your output I, I i don't see like in the 1960s it was a very common practice for pop artists to release four albums a year it was a necessity almost you know um I don't look at now as being any different. And as an artist, also, wouldn't you want to put out as much as you can? We're we're all we're all we're all people with unique experiences, and um, we have the capacity to do a lot more as artists than we currently are doing. And I even speak for myself. I I think I could stand to step it up a lot. That is, I understand what you're saying, but you know when you look at. Uh basically the barriers, you know, money and, you know. I just never saw barriers. Hmm? I just never saw barriers. I just, I came from no money too, you know what I mean? Uh, um, but it, trials and tribulations, sometimes people aren't, I guess they can't. If you're not built for it, up. you're not built for it. That's, that's true. That's really what it is, you know what I mean? There's other options you can do in this life, you know? 
And plus, there's more than one thing you can do within the music industry. You know, I love radio too. And several times I've been a radio show host, um, in addition to being an artist. Or I'm into visual arts too. I, I do that. And there's, there's, there's so many ways to um, to express yourself. I don't see limitations. I can't get my head around that, that thought of, of not being able to do something. I, that's just, you know, I don't know if that's a fault or if that's a. Have you always a been like thing. that? You seem to have that 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 or like yo, I don't I don't accept no. I don't. As an answer. Like, I don't, which is kind of like an ir irony that my new single is called No. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smoke only in the building, Mister Exclusive. And, and it's funny because SV's new album is Yes. Is it? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It is what. I, that's just me. I just. And I came from a small town, like a very unlikely working class place. Oh, you were in the country? Huh? You were in the country? No, not at, well, uh, Bank, <laughs> Victoria, BC. Oh, okay. Yeah, just outside of there in like a, a pretty dirty little place where, of course, I heard everybody saying, oh, you can't do it. But I never, I never, that never registered with me. So now that you made it, do all those people ever say, hey, how are you doing? I don't or, even know if I've made it. I, how can you not say? How can you not say you don't know if you made it? Do you want to see my bank account? Wow, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still trying to pay off my phone bill and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's just a work in progress, and it always will be. I will never achieve a perfection, but I can at least try. I hear that. I've learned a lot. If there's anything that I can rub, like, uh, pat myself on the back for, outside of artistically is I've I've learned to survive and hopefully thrive okay. yeah. now for artists um, we're gonna involve you in this now dog oh, uh, <laughs> yeah I'm grab the mic oh, yeah. yeah um for people to get in touch with you or to get the music or to see what's going on uh, can you get, can you guys give us your uh, social media Twitter Instagram real quick um, uh, well, I'm I'm on I'm on Twitter as Don Will D O N W I L L, and the group name is Tanya Morgan T A N Y A M O R G A N. Either of the two, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? Mocha. On Twitter, I'm Mocha uh, at Mocha underscore only M O K A underscore O N L Y, and the same for Instagram. And on Facebook, it's the uh, the Mocha only Facebook page, and that's kind of like my limit of social media that I, I personally take care of. I, I, I signed up for like Pinterest and stuff, but I didn't really understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, um, I didn't understand it either, yeah, though. I don't know. I mean, there's Tumblr, either that. all that, I don't Yo, know. Yo, but beyond that, I do Lifebook. And this is goes back to what I'm saying. I do Lifebook. Like, I like to interact with, with people in, in person. I think that's sorely missed these yeah, days. Yeah, I, I thought it was a way. I was like, what is Lifebook? I thought it was a website. <laughs> Yo, you, got me, you got me, you got me, you got me. Yeah. I'm not trying to come off like some guru and know it all. Like, it's nothing like that. It's just like, I'm try I, I learned, so I was fortunate to have really good teachers. I mean, like, really wise people to help steer me. Mm. And it would be a disservice if I didn't spread that same sentiment to people that might be looking up to what I'm doing. That's all. I don't have all the answers, but I can try. This has been the most interesting interview I've ever <laughs> done. I swear on my life, this is the most interesting one I've ever done. But you know what? The realest answers I've ever gotten, Man. ever. Everybody has it. All these artists have that within them, but they're afraid. I'm telling you, man, they're, people are afraid to be themselves. They're afraid to look you directly in the eye and tell you some stuff that they think is pertinent. They're afraid. I'm not looking down on them. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, we're in a weird era right now where, where like self-expression is really, I don't know who's doing it. I don't think it's a big conspiracy. I think it's a byproduct of the electronic age. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people are afraid to leave their house or they can't look away from the phone because they might make eye contact with somebody and have a life book experience. You know what I mean? Um, so anything, any little, my two cents, whatever I can give to try to help remedy that in any way I'm going to. And I'm going to use a, any situation to do so. And like I said, every artist, every human being wants to express themselves. But there's a lot of people who just stifled you know it's unfortunate and it's sad too i, I think you. so one more question for before we go and i like and, cheese 
You like cheese? I yeah. like cheese too. What? Yeah. You like marble? I like marble. I like cheddar. I like the um, Havarti. Havarti's good. I never had that one. Yeah. I had the one with the plat. Was it the wax on the cheese? Yeah, I, I don't know what that's called, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you had it too? Smoke Gouda for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Smoke Gouda. For I don't me. like the wet cheeses, like the, or, like, I'm not talking about cheese whiz or like the processed stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like the, um, what is the, like brie? It's kind of got like this. The thing. mushy. Yeah, it's like a mushroom combined with cheese. It's just a bad look. Stay yeah, away man. from that, people. Because it's a summer. Yeah, that's like, eh, yeah, it's not my thing. Mark's not meant to go with cheese like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what it is. The People's Chap, your favorite host. We got Tanya Morgan in the building. Mocha only. My man Nick's in the back. He's the one that hooked us up. Thank you very much, Nick. Nick Bam. Sure. Nick Bam. We actually know each other from Belleville, like back in the day. Yeah, I gathered that. That's oh, okay. great. That's good. But uh, you know what it is. The People's Chap, Mr. Exclusives. It's the Mocha only interview. We signing out. Easy. Much love. I didn't mean to go all philosophical, man. It's just like, oh, what I do you can't mean? help that was it, man. <laughs> people are going to like that. I, f I feel for people. Like, I genuinely feel for people. I have way more, like, empathy than I used to. You know what I mean? I used to just not give a fuck, but somehow I do. Because I care about um, this culture.